everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us and welcome to the Stellar Development Foundation's Q2 2022 quarter in review. Um, so I'm Carolyn Yi. I am the communications manager at SDF and we are really glad to have you all here for this overview of the network's progress in Q2. Um, so to recap the flow for today's call, first we're gonna have SDF CEO and executive director, Danelle Dixon, recap some Q2 highlights and the 2022 roadmap. Next, uh, VP of Ecosystem, Justin Rice, will share an overview of our latest network stats and provide updates to the first building block on our roadmap, which is increasing scalability and network innovation. And then Danelle and our CMO, Jordan Edelstein, will walk us through how we're activating more network participation. Um, and finally, Jordan will report on what we've been doing this quarter to demand and promote inclusion. So we will also be leaving some time at the end for Q&A. Um, so please go ahead and throughout the webinar, you can submit your questions um, in the Q&A tab and we'll get to as many as we can. Um, so I will turn it over to Danelle to get us started. Danelle. All right, hello everyone. Thanks for being here with us today. I'll kick us off by sharing just a few of the highlights from the quarter. Um, so I want to recap some noteworthy moments. Much of our focus this quarter was centered around adding new global on and off ramps to the Stellar Network. If you've been following us for a while, you know that on and off ramps have been a really key focus of ours. The big news here is, of course, the rollout of our groundbreaking work with MoneyGram uh, to bridge cash and crypto. We first announced this partnership last October. And now it's live around the world, which is awesome. And we'll do more on this later. Uh, we also completed one noteworthy uh, co core protocol upgrade, and that was protocol 19. And this was an especially active quarter for events. We had a team presence and big visibility at three notable industry events. Uh, the Stellar Community Fund wound down its 10th round, which was awesome. There were 152 applications submitted this cycle with 15 diverse projects winning funds to pursue their visions. And Freighter, a non-custodial wallet extension and the Vibrant Wallet both launched new 2.0 versions. So the progress we've seen this quarter is a result of us coming together to advocate for the utility and real world solutions that this technology enables. And we continue to stay really true to our roadmap to guide us. So as a reminder, the 2022 roadmap is made up of three strategic building blocks. First, we're focused on increasing network scalability and network innovation. Second, we're focused on activating more network participation. And third, we're demanding and promoting diversity and inclusion across the network and across the ecosystem. So taken together, these building blocks really help us on our way to creating our mission, which is creating equitable access to the global financial system. So I'll be back in a bit about building block number two, but first I'll hand it over to Justin to walk us through what we've done this quarter to increase scalability and network innovation. Take it away, Justin. Thank you, Danelle. Um, hello everyone, I'm Justin Rice. I'm SDF's VP of the ecosystem. And today I'm going to recap our progress on increasing scalability and network innovation. And I'm going to start with some key stats about network activity and growth. So as a reminder, at SDF, we consistently track a set of select metrics. We compare them year over year to monitor network usage. Now, because the Stellar Ledger is public record, anyone can view network activity and you, anyone out there, can verify the data that I'm about to share. So let's dig in and let's start with total accounts. So in Q2, total accounts hit 6.9 million, which is a 28% year-over-year increase. Um, next, the total number of payments. Um, in Q2, there were 38 million payments compared to 7.5 million in the same quarter of last year. That's over 400% growth year-over-year. Year. So that means we continue to see more accounts and they're making more payments, and we're headed in the right direction. Next up, how are these accounts and payments driving volume on Stellar's decentralized exchange, AKA the DEX? So combined order book and automated market maker volume surpassed 90 million lumens worth per day, which is a 166% increase year over year. Next up, total operations. So this metric represents raw network activity and that's because operations are all the functions that change the state of the ledger. So it includes payments and path payments, and orders to buy and sell assets, 
depositing it into AMMs, the whole shebang. Right? This quarter, the network surpassed 823 million operations, which is an 88% increase year over year. So these are really strong metrics for Q2, particularly considering that the current, the current bear market, right, and the impact that it's having on the industry and the economy as a whole. So despite, despite a larger downturn, the network continues to show growth and increased usage, which is a good thing. So for a bit more insight though, let's look at some metrics that speak more directly to SDF's mission of creating equitable access to the global financial system. These metrics track what we call relevant assets and they represent real financial instruments like fiat currencies such as Argentinian pesos, US dollars. Tracking these assets helps us gauge how well Stellar is connecting global financial systems. In Q2 of 2021, 82 assets qualified as relevant. They had a combined transaction volume of $83 million. As of Q2 2022, the total number of relevant assets we tracked decreased to 79. And that slight decrease is due to the strengthening of reporting criteria that we use to determine what we count as a relevant asset. Those are criteria that we're always examining and looking to improve. Now, despite the slight decrease in the number of assets that qualify as relevant, the combined transaction volume of relevant assets grew by 212% year over year. So overall, way more real world transactions. The next set of metrics are focused on operational stats and decentralization. So first let's look at the average ledger close time. This clocks in at just over six seconds, which is a little higher than last year. Um, that's still great given the significant increase in network activity. As I mentioned, there were over 800 million operations this quarter. It's also great given the fact that there have been some real spikes in trading volume and pending transactions that are likely caused by uh, crypto market volatility overall. So we monitor this number with interest, but generally the network continues to operate reliably and to be able to improve itself, able to handle both these spikes and also consistent increased activity. So the decentralization of the network, it's consistent with last year. There are the same number of tier one validator nodes, 23, and there are actually more nodes, 190, versus uh, last year's 144, so more nodes overall. Next up, let's revisit where we are with automated market makers. So last fall, validators voted to upgrade the network to protocol 18, which enabled automated market maker functionality on Stellar. Um, AMM, AMMs, automated market makers, AMMs, they allow for a more accessible and inclusive liquidity provisioning process. Right now, third-party developers offer products and interfaces that make it simple for users to deposit into liquidity pools. And those deposits introduce more efficient pathways for cross-asset payments on Stellar because there's more liquidity for those cross-asset payments to consume. In Q2, there were almost 14,000 unique pool providers and over 5,000 liquidity pools with approximately $16.6 .6 million in total value locked. So that's it on the metrics, but now let's cover some of the technical updates and let's start with this quarter's protocol upgrade. So this quarter, validators voted to upgrade the network to protocol 19, and they did so with the cooperation of the ecosystem as a whole, who have to prepare for upgrades by installing new software. It was totally seamless. Protocol 19 introduced new transaction preconditions and a new type of signer. These are two technical changes that make it easier to do things like build bridges to other blockchains and create key recovery solutions. But most importantly, the protocol 19 changes allow you to create payment channels, which are layer two protocols that support high throughput use cases. So payment channels, they allow blockchains like Stellar to scale. Before implementing pro protocol 19 in production, SDF engineers actually built a working payment channel prototype called Starlight, just to make sure the idea would work. They tested Starlight using consumer hardware and residential internet connections, so nothing fancy at all and it handled 1.19 million, 1 million payments per second between two users, 1.19 million, which is a lot. Um, and suddenly, you know, a whole host of new use cases can be built on Stellar. Starlight is well-documented, it's open source, and it's available for anyone who wants to roll up their sleeves and experiment. If you wanna learn more, check out the Starlight channel on the Stellar Dev Discord. So a protocol change, that introduces new features to the network. So it describes what you can do with Stellar now. If you wanna get a sense of where the network and the ecosystem are headed next, the best place to look is at the specs that define common standards and suggest new changes to the protocol. Stellar ecosystem proposals or SEPs 
and core advancement proposals or CAPs. So first up, CEPs. CEPs are specifications that allow ecosystem participants to build extra network infrastructure so they can interoperate easily to facilitate multi-party transactions. So these are the blueprints that people follow as they build on Stellar to make sure their products and services are compatible with everybody else's. This quarter, there was continued iteration on the three key standards for Stellar transactions, the deposit and withdraw API spec and the hosted deposit and withdraw spec, both of which allow wallets to connect on and off ramps, as well as the cross-border payments API spec, which allows for traditional end-to-end -end remittance style cross-border payments. All three of these steps were updated to allow anchors to communicate information about transaction expiration, which you know, just makes it easier for financial institutions to use Stellar. Additionally, the Stellar info file was expanded to include non-fungible tokens or NFTs, which you have probably heard a lot about over the past year. Um, and a new set detailing interoperability recommendations for NFTs was drafted in collaboration with Lightnet, which is the premier NFT marketplace built on Stella. So that SEP, it defines best practices for creating NFTs, and it lays out interoperability guidelines that ensure compatibility throughout the space. It's crucial because there is a thriving ecosystem of NFT issuers who are drawn to Stellar for its simplicity and affordability, and because of the great tooling and user experience marketplaces like Lightning provide. So well-defined best practices, it's going to help that ecosystem continue to grow and will allow it to realize its potential by ensuring that issuers use the ledger efficiently and that users can hold their NFTs in any Stellar wallet. That, by the way, is exactly the kind of thing SEPs are designed to do, right? They're designed to allow for universal interoperation. So it's very exciting to see a new one created, driven by the ecosystem in response to a new use case. This is perfect. So the core advancement proposal front was actually even more exciting this quarter. So let's talk about CAPs. CAPs are technical suggestions for changing the protocol itself to expand Stellar's functionality, again, to meet ecosystem needs. Those protocol 19 changes I mentioned that allow for payment channels, they started out as CAPs. The protocol 18 changes I mentioned that enabled AMMs on Stellar, that started out as a cap too. All new Stellar features start out as caps. And this quarter, there were actually more caps drafted than ever before, just far more activity. It was just a ton. And it was all focused on Project Jump Cannon, which will bring smart contracts to Stellar. So given the size and complexity of that project, the protocol team broke up key decisions into discrete components, each of which is addressed in its own proposal. And all told, seven caps were drafted, discussed in the open, and in some cases, prototyped. But what does that mean? Well, let's dig a little bit deeper into Project Jump Cannon to find out. So those seven caps, they define the smart contract runtime environment, the smart contract lifecycle, smart contract functions and data and fee models, and they even begin to describe how smart contracts interoperate with classic style. And early on, actually, even before those caps were drafted, the Jump Cannon team did a thorough comparison of existing smart contract technologies. And after looking at a bunch of options, including EVM and Move and EBPF, and applying specific criteria to evaluate each technology, they decided to build Stellar smart contracts on WebAssembly, or a WASM, runtime. So WASM is a robust and minimal bytecode specification that is designed to run in an adversarial environment, initially the web. But now it's used in several blockchains and it works really, really well. And all of that is to say that many of the key decisions about how to bring smart contracts to Stellar were made this quarter. And they were actually made much faster than anyone anticipated. So where are we in the process as of now? So we're still working through those caps to get them across the finish line. But also the Jump Cannon team has been developing the actual smart contracts toolkit and experience. So recently they completed a proof of concept simulation consisting of a minimal node and a UI, and test out smart contract creation and execution in a sandbox environment, and it works. Now, they are developing a plan for client-side tooling for APIs and RPC services. These are the things that everyone needs to create and execute smart contracts. The goal is to start to roll all that out in the not too distant future so that you too can begin to experiment. One other thing that's noteworthy is that all the important technical discussions about Jump Cannon they're happening in public. They're on the Stellar Dev mailing list and the Stellar Dev Discord. And there's been a ton of engagement both within SDF and with the broader developer ecosystem. So if you missed the last Jump Cannon discussion on Discord, make sure you're following Stellar Org on Twitter to be notified about the next one. So SDF expects Project Jump Cannon will enable many new use cases and applications. And that brings me to the next update. 
In Q2, uh, the SDF engineering team released Freighter 2.0, which is a non-custodial wallet extension that enables you to sign Stellar transactions in your browser. Freighter will be one of the starting points for people seeking to access uh, decentralized applications built on Stellar. In other words, Freighter will support those smart contracts I was just talking about. And this update adds new features that, in part, prepare for that evolution. So Freighter 2.0 has improved asset search, a swap feature, a feature that allows apps to request a specific signer, has better handling of path payments, which combine asset conversion and transfer into a single operation, and it includes several security updates. There's more to come from the Freighter team soon, so stay tuned. We'll keep you posted. So finally, um, let's take a look at the latest on Vibrant, which is a flagship wallet that makes it easy for even non-crypto savvy users to take advantage of the power of Stellar. In Q2, Vibrant expanded both its product suite and target markets. Um, the new and improved version of the app, Vibrant 2.0, was successfully tested and launched in Argentina and the US. Users will find all the original features, including the ability to send, store, and swap USDC, XLM, and ARST, but they'll find them in a redesigned user interface. And I gotta say, it is pretty slick. Um, Vibrant has also been adding additional on and off ramps to allow users access in even more locations. Most notably, it now connects with MoneyGram to allow USDC cash pickup and drop off in the US, and soon will do the same in many more countries. So you're about to hear more about MoneyGram from Danelle, so I'll leave it at this. Adding the MoneyGram cash access points will allow more users to send assets back to their home countries using Vibrant. This makes it easier to, as the tagline says, join the new economy. So the team is continuing to add more new features and products throughout Q3, um, and also they're kicking off some other long-term initiatives. So again, stay tuned, we'll keep you posted. So that is the end of my bit on increasing scalability and network participation. Um, if you have any questions, let me know and we can address them during Q&A. Danelle, back to you to lead us through the next building block. Thanks, Justin. So excited about all of that work and so much more that's happening here at SDF. Uh, the second building block, activate more network participation. It, it covers objectives for technical strategy, ecosystem engagement, policy advocacy, marketing, and investments. And this is how I look at it. Taken together, these components address where we can grow in an agile and mission-focused way. So progress under, these, under this building block is how Stellar stays responsive to change so that builders get the benefits of an open network that can evolve with innovation. So we did make an enterprise investment fund this quarter and the, the investment was $10 million. This is another way we're working to activate more network participation, specifically by supporting new companies that are building on Stellar that introduce the network to more opportunities. We're excited to announce the company we've invested in and we'll be doing that at a later date only because this company is in the process of a name change. We want to support them through that. So we're going to wait to announce the news together with them under their new name. But in the spirit of transparency, uh, we just wanted to make sure that we let folks know that we did make the investment there. We also added another investment to our growing matching fund roster. As you may remember, last quarter we announced the $30 million matching fund and it's uh, four, first four investments totaling around 1.5 million. As a reminder, this is an investment track under the enterprise fund that targets early stage companies interested in building on the Stellar network and co-invests funds raised from a lead investor of up to $500,000. So in Q2, SDF made a $300,000 matching fund investment in StableCorp, uh, a stablecoin issuer and digital banking infrastructure provider based in Canada. They're building institutional grade financial use cases around crypto assets. Uh, Stablecore will leverage its strategic relationship with VersaBank, their partner in developing the VCAD. The VCAD is the, um, a Canadian asset backed one-to-one -one in fiat to bring new retail and institutional users onto the seller network, in addition to introducing new asset flows and driving further usage of relevant assets on Stellar. So we look forward to seeing how they progress into investments in more markets leveraging blockchain technology. Uh, on June 10th, on Consensus's main stage, where it was very hot, by the way, we announced the official rollout of the MoneyGram service, which makes it possible to convert cash to and from crypto quickly and easily. This is a first of its client kind global on-ramp service for digital assets and digital wallets and it increases the utility of digital assets by creating a bridge between cash and cryptocurrencies. 
This is something that I've been excited about for a really long time, and I was just so happy to see it launch. It is a fee-free service for the first 12 months, and it's live now with cash in available in 11 countries and cash out available globally. So we launched this together with an initial batch of wallet partners, including Lobster, Vibrant, and Wire. Uh, these wallets and many more to come now offer their users the ability to turn physical cash in, in local currency into stellar USDC at any participating MoneyGram location worldwide, all through one simple integration. So we've been talking about this since October, so many of you probably know the basics, but what I really want us to remember is that this is a game-changing service. This is a live solution that can help connect the 1.4 billion people currently living in a cash economy to the world of digital assets. It applies to all sorts of use cases like a gig platform that allows users in remote areas to accept payment in USDC and then pick up cash at their local MoneyGram location or an investment app that allows users in the cash economy the ability to use this physical cash to invest in fractional shares of blue chip stock or equities. All of this is made possible through one integration and one core asset, USDC on Stellar. So we're aware of no other service that offers such broad connectivity to the cash economy in such a powerful and simple way. So if you're a wallet or an application that wants to leverage this integration, learn more at the address that's shown on the screen or reach out to us at partnerships at stellar.org with any questions. Uh, along these same lines of driving access via on and on ramps, we're also excited to announce our recent partnership with Neum. It's a Singapore based global payments unicorn to expand the reach of the Stellar network in a number of ways. Neum has added the ability to accept Stellar USDC as settlement and has adopted the Stellar interoperability standard for cross border payments. This means that any company can now leverage Stellar to send fast, cost-efficient payments worldwide via NEAM's extensive payout network. Next, we'll work together to extend NEAM's vast coverage to wallet partners looking for the ability to on and off ramp users globally. So at the completion of this work, NEAM's network will complement MoneyGram's cash rails for on and off ramping with global bank rails with the same speed, efficiency, and interoperability that the Stellar network is known for. So the next updates under this building block are all about marketing. So that is Jordan's bailiwick. So welcome our CMO, Jordan, to take us through those highlights. Thanks, Danelle. So the marketing team continued to drive messaging and news around key priorities this past quarter. And we've also been trying some new things, launching three new thought leadership formats with Danelle, Tomer, and Justin. Danelle's new podcast, Block by Block, dives into timely topics at the intersection of crypto tech and society. And these conversations aren't specific to things happening on Stellar. They're an opportunity for Janelle to reach out beyond the network and bring you interesting talks with people about how blockchain tech is changing the world as we know it. Check out our first conversations with journalist Laura Shin and Paxos CEO, Chad Cascarilla. And the next episode drops this week, so make sure you're subscribed. Tomer launched a Tech Talks interview series featuring builders innovating on the Stellar network. If you're interested in the behind the scenes of how things get built, definitely check those out. And Justin is now regularly sharing his thoughts on the broader blockchain and crypto space from his unique point of view as the VP of Ecosystem on his Substack newsletter, The Soft Fork Bulletin. Check it out for the industry commentary as well as pop culture references and music industry insights from his past life. He is a lot cooler than I am. On the topic of sustainability, this quarter, SDF launched its first of its kind environmental footprint assessment framework, developed in collaboration with a major international consultancy. The framework informs and enables blockchain and financial services organizations to consider further measurement of their electricity consumption and emissions. Applying the assessment framework to the Stellar Network, the findings were that the electricity consumption and carbon emissions of the network are low. The Stellar Network's electricity use for one year generates the greenhouse gas emissions equivalent to only about 33 US homes. Despite the, net, the Stellar Network's already low electricity use, SDF supports sustainability through the, throughout the entire network. We established a carbon dioxide removal commitment and will take the significant step to pay for the removal of the historical carbon footprint of the network since 2015. 
So by removing the network's unavoidable CO2 emissions, they can no longer contribute to climate change. And SDF will also work with ecosystem companies who choose to opt in to pay for the removal of carbon from the network on an annual basis going forward. You can learn more about all of this at stellar.org slash foundation slash sustainability. So further on the content front, we debuted another video case study highlighting the power of Stellar featuring crypto infrastructure provider Wire, as Danelle talked about, and how their suite of APIs empowers businesses and developers to bring their visions to life by bridging the fiat and crypto worlds. By establishing additional corridors, improving upon their existing products and innovating on new ones, Wire empowers fintechs and developers to connect their own products to all of Stellar and its anchors, gaining access to digital assets, including USDC on Stellar and beyond. And this is exactly the kind of amplification of impact that we love to see in the ecosystem. Companies working together to increase utility for each other as well as for users. You can visit the case studies live landing page on stellar.org to learn more. And we've been running paid media on the case study to great results with over 60,000 clicks to the landing page just within the first month of its launch. And we're using it heavily at conferences as well. Now, speaking of conferences, as Danelle mentioned, SDF is back on the conference circuit in full force. So first, in terms of industry events, we started the quarter in Paris at Paris Blockchain Week Summit in April, where SDF was a platinum sponsor. And our COO, Jason Chapala, spoke on the main stage about how CBDCs and stablecoins will both play a role in driving financial inclusion. This was a terrific opportunity to gather with the blockchain community. We're already looking forward to next year's event. Further than our DevRel team was also there to coast a 20 hour hackathon with Ledger to provide developers with an in-person opportunity to build solutions on both technologies. Then in May, it was back to Europe where we had a delegation attend the World Economic Forum in Davos, Switzerland. We co-hosted the Liquidity Lounge with Securency and participated in 34 meetings and sessions. That's a lot. The release of SDF sustainability assessment framework was a really key topic of discussion with industry leaders and policymakers. Most notably, Danelle took the stage with Fred Harrison of FTX, Anthony Scaramucci of Skybridge and others during the WEF session, Crypto Carbon Footprint, or Crypto's Carbon Footprint. And Candace Kelly also participated in the Financial Times' panel, The Future of Humanitarian Aid. SDF also co-hosted two events, a roundtable with Protocol to further the discussion on sustainability and crypto, and a panel with Circle on the inclusive future of Web3, financial services designed by and for women. And then in June, we rounded out the quarter with Coindesk's consensus. As Danelle mentioned, we made the MoneyGram rollout news public on stage, with Danelle participating in that fireside chat with Bennett Richardson, the president of Protocol, addressing how cash to crypto ramps are empowering previously excluded people, such as those who work in the informal economy with new access to digital assets. To support the launch, we activated a top tier sponsorship of consensus. The Stellar brand had really high visibility on the main stage and throughout the entire venue. We also published the MoneyGram Access website where developers and users can learn how to leverage the service. You can check that out at stellar.org slash MoneyGram. The announcement was covered by news outlets, including Protocol, which had a headline we could not have written better ourselves. Getting money into crypto is still too hard. Stellar and MoneyGram have a fix. It was definitely a packed quarter for events. We're thrilled they're back. And now we are heads down preparing for our own this coming fall. So gearing up for our fourth annual Meridian Conference, which takes place in Rome, Italy from October 11th to the 13th. Meridian's gonna serve as a forum for industry leaders, developers, entrepreneurs, and policymakers to discuss how we're taking action to build the world we wanna see. And I wanna talk a little bit about the thinking behind that theme for this year's event. The issues of the world are only growing larger as everyone knows. An Italian inventor and philosopher, Leonardo da Vinci once said, I have been impressed with the urgency of doing. Knowing is not enough, we must apply. Being willing is not enough, we must do. And so inspired by da Vinci's call to action in the spirit of our host country, the theme for Meridian is the urgency of doing. We must rise to today's challenges by offering our own solutions and then act upon them. Registration is open and we hope to see you there, so act. Stay tuned for more details about this year's event. We have speaker updates and program details rolling out in the coming weeks. And for now, I'll just say we cannot wait to reconvene in person after two years of virtual conferences 
we're ready to make a splash in Rome. Now, Meridian is also a highlight because it's always a great opportunity to align and engage with important stakeholders like policymakers and regulators. And so in terms of the last quarter, both domestically and internationally, SDF continues to engage with key policymakers, non-governmental organizations, central banks, and leading interest groups to help shape digital asset policy. The policy team participated in a range of advocacy forums, including speaking on stablecoin policy during the Digital Chambers Blockchain Summit, on illicit finance during a roundtable with some federal agencies, and on additional roundtables focused on industry input for President Biden's executive order with White House officials. Then in May, we participated in a forum on California's approach to crypto regulation, and we're engaging further with California policymakers as the executive order process moves forward. And then we've also witnessed significant movement of crypto regulation in Europe this quarter with the passage of the Markets in Crypto Assets, or MICA proposal, and transfer of funds regulation. The policy team contrib contributed to shaping both legislative proposals by engaging with the European Parliament, Commission, and Council, including participation in a workshop aimed to engage and educate European authorities on the proposals. These are the most comprehensive regulations the industry has seen to date, and SDF will continue ongoing advocacy and engagement as details are finalized and implementation begins. Now, for our last building block, I'll cover how we're demanding and promoting diversity and inclusion across all of our work. Now, as a reminder, this building block's objectives include how SDF can leverage research, our mandate and network effects to achieve our mission of equitable access to the global financial system. First, the Stellar Community Fund, which is a program that offers anyone building on Stellar the chance to secure support and funding from SDF based on community input, just concluded its 10th round, receiving a whopping record 152 submissions from 47 countries. Now, 44 of those submissions were selected to participate as candidates. And after four weeks of community, dis community discussion and deliberation, a panel of 52 judges drawn from both the SDF, the Greater Stella Community and Ecosystem, voted to award, award 15 of those projects their requested budgets and give away a grand total of over 10 and a half million XLM. Now we have several additional initiatives aimed at reaching more, even more diverse pools of developers, entrepreneurs, and people who want to learn about blockchain in general. The gamified coding experience StellarQuest is actually being split into two components now, StellarQuest Live and StellarQuest Learn. StellarQuest Learn is evergreen and people compete where people can compete, complete challenges at their own pace while facing increasingly difficulty. While Stellar Quest Live, SDF will continue to host events, live events periodically as a separate and supplemental experience to learn. Also launched in April, Stellar, Stellar Campus Experts is a community-driven program for students designed to help them become experts in the field and provide them with the tools, resources, and structure needed to cultivate interest in innovative technologies on their campuses. Additionally, SDF and DSF's lab conducted its second Stellar Blockchain Bootcamp with nine fintechs operating in Africa, building solutions on Stellar, winning prizes ranging from five dollars to $15,000 worth of XLM. And then in May, Techstars and SDF hosted a Techstars Startup Weekend in Mexico that brought together the blockchain community in the region to build innovative ideas in finance and beyond with Stellar. Now, we're continuing to drive global and inclusive participation in the ways that we provide funding, support education, and engage overall. You just heard a bit about the geographic range of participation in SCFs this cycle, and they're all the regional boot camps and accelerators we've supported to focus on local builders. We are committed to growing the ecosystem in an inclusive way, and we need you to engage with us to make that reach and impact even bigger. SDF offers funding for a variety of needs and projects, and this is your periodic reminder to take advantage of that. So for example, when we launched the matching fund, we called out that only 5% of crypto entrepreneurs are female. We wanna see more women starting projects and we wanna support them through opportunities like the matching fund. So help us spread the word. And if you're a developer interested on, in building on Stellar, join the Stellar Dev Discord server and plug into a really informative growing developer ecosystem. This quarter alone, we saw over 50% growth in Discord members. I could go on, but my point is this, and we wanna support thousands of participants and enterprises of all shapes and sizes. 
This is how we'll foster even greater opportunities for expansion for network participants and grow a truly inclusive global community. So that's all the programmed content we have. Uh, and I will turn it back over to Carolyn for the Q&A. Thanks, Jordan. Thanks, everyone. Um, if you haven't gotten a chance to submit your questions yet, just a reminder to pop them in the Q&A um, tab on your toolbar, and we will get to as many as we can. Um, so first, uh, we have a question from someone about Starbridge. Uh, Danelle, maybe you want to take this one. How is the development of Starbridge looking? Uh, great question. Uh, bridging on the between Stellar and other changes, just a really important part of what we want to see happen. And Starbridge is our own very opinionated view of what a bridge could look like. And it doesn't mean it's the view that everyone should take, but it is ours. The code is looking really great. It's actually completed, but there's a lot of work to be done in terms of making the bridge actually happen. So um, I think that there's actually even, they can test some of it and you can actually see the transactions, at least internally, we've done some of that work. Uh, but uh, what we're gonna do now is sort of take it to the next level and really figure out like how to implement these things, you need to be able to have that bridge work, have it work with the other chain, and then really like bring developers to it, right? So this is like not just a really simple thing where you push the code out into the world and go, okay, guys, make it work. We have to spend time on it. And so we need to actually get those next steps in line for ourselves and figure out what we're gonna do. We've done this in conjunction with demonstrating the importance of bridging through the bridge bounty program, which maybe Justin, this could be a good time for you to give a brief update on that. Yeah, sure. So uh, earlier this year, we launched a bridge bounty program where we offered essentially R&D grants um, and opened up applications to people who wanted to build bridges to other blockchain ecosystems. And the goal of that was the same, right? We are looking, we, we understand the importance of bridging and we believe that in a world where there's sort of cross-chain interoperability and ultimately we think it's important based not only on our vision of sort of the future, but also based on ecosystem um, needs and what, what people have been asking for, for there to be these bridges to other blockchains. So Starbridge is something that we can work on ourselves, but we also wanted to create, to support other people who would be interested in building bridges too. And so that application process closed um, in early June and uh, a, a sort of grants committee has been reviewing all of the applications and we are going to announce soon um, exactly like sort of the outcome who, who's being awarded grants. Essentially, we're gonna have five different bridge bounties that we're awarding and these are gonna tend to favor um, bridges that already exist. So integrating Stellar into existing bridges but there'll be more information quite soon. At a high level though, the exciting thing about this is that we are not only trying to tackle this problem by putting our own efforts into it, we're also sort of recognizing that innovation can and should happen outside of SDF. There's a whole world, whole ecosystem of stellar developers and greater blockchain developers and the bridge bounty, we've actually, we had like such good applications. And so I feel like when we announce it, it's gonna be pre a pretty exciting um, evidence that there's like a lot of innovation happening outside of SDF to connect stellar to other blockchains. So stay Great, tuned. Thank you. Thank you both. Um, we have a few different iterations of this question from community members. So Danelle, maybe you can help address um, recent scam questions and flagged assets for the community. Can you touch on that? Yeah, I mean, the, the, the beautiful part about open source and about being an open public network is that anyone can build on it. The challenging part is, of course, that there are scams that uh, come to the network. One of the things we always say, if it feels too good to be true, then maybe it is. And so really uh, spend a lot of time focusing on the background, whatever information you can get on those assets before you dive into them. What I also love about openness, and I dealt with a lot of this in the early days of the web, and um, frankly, also when I was at Mozilla working on the browser, is when you have actually participants in the ecosystem who can come in and sort of fill that void, that need for developer tools and developer um, ideas around how to spot scams for their own consumers. And so uh, interestingly, we've recently seen Stellar experts step in to fill some of that void. There's a lot of other participants in, the, in an active community that can really help to keep these tools up to date and to really express their opinions because they see so much more than we do in terms of what's happening with the consumers on the other side of, um, of any kind of asset that's being leveraged. We unfortunately don't have a view into all of that since we're not the consumer platform. So I think it's really important that to understand that scams are always gonna be part of any network 
Uh, unfortunately, that, that that's the bad that comes with the good of being this like vibrant ecosystem. Um, we are focused on education. We have an updated scam FAQ that we put out, I think it was last week. Uh, I encourage you to take a look at that. We're gonna continue to focus on education ourselves around the platform itself, around what to try to look for with respect to scams. But I'm really loving the fact that we have these awesome third parties that are developing tools and that are thinking about this themselves for their, uh, their own users. So more, I hopeful, I'm hopeful that we'll see more education and more tools out there that'll be developed. That is what we saw in the early days of the web. I don't know, like, I, I know I'm old, so I can reflect on this, but like way back when, there wasn't a lot of information about privacy and about cookies and all of that on the early days of the web. And we had organizations sort of step in to fill that void and to support users with respect to, you know, providing information to them, but also providing sort of like trusted brands um, around that. And that's what I think we're gonna see as this ecosystem develops too. Awesome, thanks, Danelle. Um, Justin, this one is maybe for you. Um, is it free to start learning Stellar Quest? Heck yeah. Um, starting Stellar Quest Learn is 100% free. It's designed that way so that anyone anywhere can get their head around Stellar. And by the time you're done with Stellar Quest Learn, you'll have a pretty good understanding of how it all works. Stellar Quest Live, which, you know, I don't know exactly when we're going to kick off the next one, but Stellar Quest Live actually takes it even a step further, which is that in Stellar Quest Live, you compete and you can actually win small Lumen grants. Um, and so it actually is a method for sort of distributing lumens into the hands of individual developers. So Stellar Quest Learn is free, Stellar Quest Live is an opportunity to actually, um, you know, tap into some of the lumen grant programs that we have. Great, um, and this might be another one for you as well, Justin. Do we know yet when the next um, community fund cohort is gonna open up? Uh, early August. The next community fund cohort will open up in early August and we should have an announcement very, very soon. We may even be have an announcement as soon as next week. Okay, great. Um, someone asks, we are aiming to develop a stable coin over the Stellar network. Um, how can I learn more? Um, does anyone wanna take this? Yeah, question? so I'll take that. Um, the awesome thing about uh, an open source public network. Again, I'm going to just go back. Those are my roots. Those are the things I love is the fact that you can develop on the network without any assistance or support from SDF because you actually, we have these developer tools that are out there. And we also have um, some really awesome documentation, which Justin and his team have done like such a great job in putting out there in addition to the engineers. So there's that. But also, if you get stuck or you want some extra specific help on like, you know, providing guidance around it, partnerships at stellar.org is the best place to go. They will, they mind, they, they mind that, um, uh, that email channel. So you'll get a response from them. And um, again, really excited to see new participants come into the network. Great, okay. Um, we have a question about MoneyGram as well. Um, can we share some initial MoneyGram metrics so far? People wanna know how things are going. Yeah, so it just launched really around the 30th of, um, of June, it launched globally. So we have cash out now global, which is so awesome and makes me so happy. We spent a lot of time testing. We actually put together our own uh, working with third parties to like really put together our own testing network so we can test in each of the regions because we want to make sure uh, that it's the flow is working in all regions and that we've actually gone into some of these money gram, like money gram locations. I've actually tested some of it too. It's been kind of a fun process to be able to get through this. Uh, so the percentages are looking really strong, particularly for cash out. Like the percentage I think is like a 90%, 90% plus uh, cash out success. Sometimes there are some issues on the edges with respect to um, you know the, the having the same um, ID that you had when you put the information in, those things have to match. And so, but I'm super excited with how it's going given that it's like brand new in terms of a product. Cashin is a bit harder. It's a huge agent network. That's why we started Cashin a little bit slow, more slowly. We didn't do a global Cashin. We started with 11 countries and it's a big agent network. It's a new service. Cashin um, needs, so we have a process that's being refined, working with the agents to learn. Uh, just the technology, sometimes like the questions that are asked of the agents when someone comes in kind of throws the agents off a bit. Um, remember, the agents are also required to be thinking through all of those um, anti-money laundering questions. And so if they get thrown off by a question, they get nervous. So 
this is a, uh, it's just going to be a bit of a learning curve, which is why that this is a fee free service in the beginning and why MGI is committed to us that um, they're going to keep it that way for the first 12 months as we all learn this process and get more up to speed, get more wallets into it. But they've also committed to us that even after that, they're going to have really low fees and they're going to focus on this being their lowest fee area once the fees are initiated into it. So I want everyone to go out and use this service, provide the feedback, think about it as we're like actively testing this. This is actively looking for any bugs. The, the pipe at work, the pipe works exceptionally well. It's just sometimes that, you know, the end on, on the end user side and with respect to the agent side, there's there's a little some hiccups here and there. But I am thrilled to see uh, what we're seeing out there. So um, more to come on this. And if, when we get more details around it, this is mostly our testing. But when we get more details around like how the service is actually performing, we'll provide them. But we just we don't have a lot of that now. This is just internal testing that we've been doing with third parties. Great, thanks, Danelle. Uh, marketing. So Jordan, this one is for you. Any plans on building a project listing website or for projects like Jump Cannon smart contracts? Yeah, sure. We actually, um, we have a site like that now. So um, within uh, the Stellar.org website, if you go within the learn segment, uh, we have a section on, uh, uh, you'll see a note on projects and partners, and it takes you to a whole directory. It's sortable in terms of different types of companies um, that are built on Stellar. Um, or building in the middle of building on Stellar, um, classified by different ways. And then, yeah, as smart contracts launch, that'll certainly become a classification that will add it. That site, as you can imagine, is a, a living, breathing thing in terms of who's building on the network. And so um, you could head over there. Uh, again, it's under the learn section uh, under the header on Stellar.org. Thanks, Jordan. Okay, uh, one more question for Danelle. Um, this one is about policy. So there's been a lot going on with the SEC and other US agencies. What's SDF focused on? Oh gosh, there is a lot that's happening in the US and frankly, internationally. The US is, uh, there are a lot of agencies um, that have been paying attention to crypto. I think that the market and the bear market uh, and the challenges that we've seen over the last, you know, six to eight weeks uh, with respect to uh, the algorithmic stable coins and other things, the leverage in the market that has brought a lot more attention, sometimes not so much positive attention uh, to from the regulators and from policymakers. But um, so we're really focused on stable coin legislation. We see that this is something that's actually uh, getting a lot of legs domestically in the US. And so we'd like to see something happen there. I think it actually opens the door for other uh, entities that are bigger players in the web space to be able to move over into leverage stable coins because I think that there's a little bit of fear right now in doing so. So I think legislation around stable coins will not only cement the opportunity for their use for lots of players, but it'll bring, I think, more players to the space, which I really, really want to see. Um, we're also just generally focused on, you know, what we spending a lot of time with policymakers to make sure that we can do education around uh, crypto and blockchain. In fact, I'm actually headed to DC today to be able to meet with some policymakers and some regulators around a lot of the issues that we see happening in the ecosystem. So um, lots of momentum to be able to get to, I think, a really nice piece of stablecoin legislation domestically, probably not till closer to the end of the year. But we pay attention to all of these things. We spend, we have a really awesome policy team. So we don't just focus in the US, we focus outside the US, but it seems a bit more active right now here. And I do just want to say, I saw another question on here, and I know we want to answer all of them. I don't want to waste our, um, our time on anything, but I love this question because it talked about how we're using WASM and Rust, um, and are we making trying to make any closer connections to appeal to the Rust community? I love the Rust community. The Rust community was something we I spent a lot of time with when I was at Mozilla. I remember when Rust was developed. I, you know, Graydon, who works with us here at SDF, he's one of the developers of Rust. So we love, we would love to to be able to create more relationships and opportunity with the Rust community. So please reach out if you're interested and. You know, we are constantly trying to be able to um, reach out to developers throughout our different channels. So, sorry, I just had to throw that one in. Back to you. Of course. All right. Thanks, everyone, for joining us today. Thanks for all the great questions. Um, and you can always watch out for the recap um, of the webinar and also the report later today um, on SDF's blog, as well as our quarterly report landing page. Um, so keep an eye out and we will see you next quarter. Thanks everyone.